It's like fan service. It's like when you finally catch an Easter egg in a Marvel movie. It's just satisfying. Mm -hmm. There's something about it that just makes you smile, all right? And there are cars out there that you will likely never own. Like ever. Well, there's a giant Suzuki coming in. It's moving fast. Cars that you just can't see yourself in no matter what point in life that you're at. But you're still curious about one when they do pop up at a Cars and Coffee. You think to yourself, there's no way, like, that work for me. And you'd be kind of right. The car probably just wouldn't be good for you because you know you, right? But these cars deserve some more appreciation and respect, all right? Put some respect on the name, all right? They were the foundation of an entire generation of K-E-I cars. All right, I'm Alex. Alex set up by on Instagram. And today we're gonna be talking about a K car that most know of but have no idea what it looks like. A car that literally has 0.6 liters of fury and weighs 1,600 pounds. A car that was made by a company that specialized in weird, funky things that kids in today's day and age have absolutely no idea. And even us to this day and age really don't know what Suzuki is honestly up to. A car that looks a bit like a combination between a Miata, MR2, and a Lexus, depending on where you smushed it. Ladies and gentlemen, because one person asked in the comments for 72 days in a row, we're going to be talking about you wanting to own a Suzuki Cappuccino. Men, we're under attack by a giant vehicle by the name of Suzuki. And if you're just jumping into one of these videos, I'm running out of patterns to do. Hi. Don't forget to subscribe so we can keep making banging videos like this. And if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to hit us up over at fitmentindustries.com where we literally have everything you could possibly imagine for your four bolt Suzuki cappuccino or otherwise. And if you're watching this in the month of November, we have a whole month long of Black Friday deals going on. So you're gonna wanna check it out. The description link will be below and it's pretty awesome. All right, because don't get me wrong, I like buying everything on Cyber Monday, but it is a little bit of a stressor and I lose more hair when we just do that day. I'd rather kind of spread it out just a little bit. This is Suzuki Cappuccino is a little itsy bitsy car that was produced from 1991 to 1998 in Kosai, Japan and was a two-door roadster that was designed to meet the K it's an EI, but it's an AY car specifications for lower taxes and insurance in Japan. K car literally translates to light automobile and is the smallest highway legal passenger car style thing that you can buy in Japan. It was a great way to just not have to pay a lot in taxes because Japan just does that. There's someone in the comments that keeps asking for this car, all right? Or maybe just K cars in general. In either case, keep them coming, bud, all right? The cappuccino would weigh in just under 1,600 points and come with a turbocharged, yeah, turbocharged three-cylinder dual overhead cam, which was 657 cc's, all right? Just three cc's short of the max displacement allowed for a car to be considered a K car, all right? The car itself was interesting and featured some things that other similar cars, little baby cars, didn't, all right? The cappuccino could be used as a closed coupe, coupe, if you wanna be fancy. A Tita, a Targa, or a full on convertible. The glass bended around the rear side of the car, which was pretty interesting at the time, with most coupes just having a flat window glass on the back. You could take it off and you could stuff it in the trunk, taking up pretty much the entire amount of space, but it was fun, all right? Came with 63 horsepower, all right? This monster came with four wheel disc brakes and rear wheel drive, all right? You can even get it with power assisted steering and a double wishbone suspension, and even though, but honestly, the cappuccino is competition like the Honda Beat and the AZ1, which is where you get the ABCs of the K car. The cappuccino stayed alive long enough for people like you and people like me to look at them on the import image websites and say, A giant Suzuki has been sighted on Highway 316 and it's moving fast. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh my Holy God, Holy Billy. Ah, look, look. <laughs> that giant Suzuki. You know, for like 10 grand, that honestly ain't a bad idea. Plus, I'll have somebody that no one else has. Plus, look at it. It's so happy and excited all the time. Oh, look at it. It's a motorcycle motor, pretty much. Oh, it's like a Miata, but smaller and slower. The car only came in a few limited colors, mostly silver, red, green, black, and blue. You couldn't really get anything else besides that. It's just how it is, all right? Buckle up. You could snatch one for a pretty decent price and scream up to zero to 60 in like, oh, 11 point? three seconds. Yep. Perfect speed to go with that limited slip differential though and rear wheel drive, all right? You could initial D the f out of this car. The facelift, which wasn't really a facelift from 1995 to 1998, would get a K6A, which came with a bit more displacement, a 7,500 
RPM red line, more lightweight, and a slightly better zero to 60. But it wasn't really enough to mention. It was still very slow, okay? And even though the car had barely any horsepower and barely enough metal to be turned into a shoe for Optimus Prime, it was still well known. The Suzuki Cappuccino was actually a fairly popular car back in the day. The car would even pop up in animes like Initial D. All right, and that was pretty much the go-to Strat in the 90s, which drew up quite a bit of attention and to the softer preemptive Miata, it would later dominate, but it worked really well before the Miata came about. And since it was initial D, everybody wanted one. All right, it was a soft top coupe market of the early 90s. What else could you want? And for the most part, they fit the need of the early 90s in Japan until the market shifted away from the tiny boy coupes and instead moved onward towards the mini SUVs and CUVs because everybody wants a CUV, I'm not sure why, all right? Just because the hood is bigger and you feel like you sit higher, that doesn't mean you have more space. But my one friend that has requested this 72 times in the comments, all right? Sir, there's no way we can stop it. This Suzuki is extremely reliable. We are not here to talk about the history of the Suzuki Cappuccino. Oh no. We are here to talk about you wanting to own, acquire, purchase, loan, or lease one of these tiny looking, slow if stock, fast as hell if not, K cars that single-handedly confuses even more people than Suzuki's entire passenger vehicle strategy. Because I'm still confused as to what exactly Suzuki was trying to do back in the day, all right? We're here to talk about you wanting to own one of these bad boys. So you want a Suzuki Cappuccino. Well, set down your Hayabusa engine and grab your favorite race helmet because you're in for a damn treat if you pick up one of these things. But just know, if you do pick up one of these things, you are just like the person in the comments. Like the one person out of a few couple people that are gonna want one of these. It's just a thing. Owning a Suzuki Cappuccino is like owning one of the best examples of what a fun car could be, all right? Fun, super compact, just and extremely simple without trying to scare away the competition. It's literally just a car that you can't help but smile at. It's a Miata, but with a mentality of less is more because there's literally less of it. K cars as a whole were a space that manufacturers could try out different and unique things for their platforms without necessarily sacrificing too much money, which is very similar to Mini and BMW's relationship, except they're more reliable. The updated K6A used in the old cookie cappuccino models would have more modification potential than its predecessor, but you can still do quite a bit to wake up the tiny little motor. It makes a lot of noise where you may not necessarily be going fast, but in a tiny car on a big track, it feels like you are going fast. That's one of the best things of having a small car. It's one of the best things of having a Miata or a Cappuccino or anything very similar to it is that the smaller they become, the faster and more connected you feel to them. From a modification standpoint, you'll find that most people spend time focusing on gripping the little car for flat out driving with literally no braking needs. Like that's the goal. If you can just put the gas pedal down and steer, you're good. Sticky semi-slick tires, lightweight baby wheels like Avan, Gram lights, or even baby flower wheels, and you're pretty much set to go and they look pretty decent. Tighten up the suspension with some coilovers or lowering springs with a little bit of modification, and you'll have a car that'll feel like it's on rails, and it is, by definition, on rails. But that's pretty okay, but people will even go even further on these things if they want to, swapping out motors entirely as needed, getting rid of this baby turbo three-cylinder, which really doesn't do well once you start throwing real, real power at it because of just the way that it was built. A lot of plastic pieces, not metal pieces. That's just how it goes sometimes. You could actually even sometimes, people would throw in a Hayabusa motor or even a full on passenger car motor, you know, like with real heads, real cams, like normal car stuff. And when they started to do that, sure they threw off the weight distribution, but holy shit, was it fast. But if a Hayabusa swap doesn't kill you, the smiling will. These cars are an absolute blast to drive. And if you're looking to pick one up, it's important to remember the following details on buying a used Suzuki. Suzuki. At a Suzuki dealer, there's a giant Suzuki that moves real fast at your local Suzuki dealer. It's called the Suzuki Cappuccino. You're going to be buying a car that was predominantly only out of Japan. Parts, reliability, and ingenuity will go hand in hand. Don't pick one up if you're not willing to be a little bit of a MacGyver at times because the support isn't really there. Even like the Club of America for Suzuki Cappuccinos, the website looks like 2003. It's just a little bit dated. Everything in the car and the support for it, just a little bit dated. And number one, or number two, you buy one of these not to take yourself too seriously. This isn't an S2000. It's not even a 350Z. It ain't even a Miata. 
And Miatas are happy, like happy as hell. It's happier than that. You can't even mean mug the car. You can't be angry in the car. It's just too happy. And you need to be a happy person to own one of these cars because there's no way people are gonna take you seriously if you're pulling up, mm, how much does that retail for? Like don't, no, no. No, no. Modification exists, but they're different than most. They focus on the little things that make the driving experience better more than your typical aesthetic modifications because not really many exist. You'll see people throw a little bit of over fenders on there, maybe a wing and a diffuser, but you really don't need any of that. And most people just end up taping up the taillights and then just sending it, all right? It's one of the ABCs of the K cars. It's one that'll continue to be slowly imported into the United States and follow the same train, although probably a little bit smaller, of the MG community with the minis and the things like like that because those cars are also a blast to drive, fun on the track, super great community, not really that big, but it's, a, it's gonna put a smile on your face. So what else would you want? One thing to remember though, is that it's still, still a Suzuki. So for that one person that asked for this for 73 days, I hope we met your appetite, okay? You just still comment, just something else for 73 days. For everyone else that never asked for this, be sure to check us out over at fitmentindustries.com and hopefully you learned a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two and you can maybe just think about some sort of fun fact on a Friday night and be like, yeah, I know this about Suzuki cappuccinos and your friends that all drive Evos or WRXs or STIs are gonna look at you like, why, why, why? because it's fun. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries and we will see you later. Peace.